Hi, Rudy at Clodden Painting Studio here with a new video on painting some Perry War of the Roses bowmen. I'm going for a, a speed painting technique to have these guys looking quite dirty um, and battle worn. Um, the models have been primed um, with a combination of paints. I'll link to the previous video uh, where I discussed these, but quickly, um, it's Halford's. Camouflage Brown, Army Painter Leather Brown um, from 45 degree angle, uh, Halford's Khaki from directly above. And then that's further been dry brushed with some Games Workshop Pallid Witch Flesh, which I have applied onto uh, the skin from the pot as well. Um, we're going to be mainly be using um, Games Workshop Contrast Paints with some other um, inks and metallics. I may need to have a, a light uh, base colour for these contrast paints to work. Um, I did try using the uh, flesh colours over the um, dry brushed skin but uh, the khaki and brown layers were just too dark for it to work properly. Um, starting things off I'm, I'm tackling the metal. Um, Go to get a, a grubby look by using some Games Workshop tin bits, sadly out of production, um, you could go for Vallejo Game Colour tinny tin instead. We'll give this time to dry and then dry brush a silver over the top. You could go straight to the silver. I want this metal to look like it's seen better days. While that dries, we'll get the main uh, colour we're using for these units down, which is going to be Contrast Blood Angels Red. These bowmen are going to be loyal to Warwick the Kingmaker. So we'll use red a lot on the clothing, sometimes on jackets, other times on the leggings. Always some care needed with the contrast paints once to really try and keep it to the areas of the cloth, leave the straps. Just means you don't have to go back and clean up. The khaki paint is pretty much an exact match for Vallejo game colour German camel beige. So if we do make any mistakes, can touch up with camel beige. So that's the main colour down, tying everything together, Blood Angels Red. Um, other leggings we'll do in browns and greys. And when we have the sort of padded armour here, probably some um, browns or off-whites would be appropriate there. So, with some snake bite leather. Some leggings. We're going to find having used these or similar darker uh, base colours is that your contrast paints are going to be a lot more muted. So it is something to bear in mind. Perhaps if you're used to using a darker colour, perhaps Saigor Brown, you might want to go for Wildwood or, or Snake Bite Leather to get the same sort of brown finish you like. Um, it may just turn out too dark if you use the Saigor Brown. So as well as the snake bite leather, I'll also put some basilicanum grey on the sleeves here. Got some uh, skeleton hoard. As well as these leggings and this padded armour here. 
use this for the feathers and the arrows and wherever there's a bag hanging as well. It's not just contrast paints that we can use over a miniature that's had xenophil highlighting like this. I've got some coat d'arm chestnut ink. I'll use that for the wood. For leather areas, such as uh, boots and belts, I have some brown ink again from Coat Arms. For the skin, I'm going to use Dark Oath Flesh. Using the Pallid Witch Flesh earlier means that I'll get a decent colour now. Just going straight over the khaki or browns would come out too dark. Some foundry gun metal for doing the metallic areas that includes tips of the bows, arrowheads and also a sort of top down highlight on the helmets. So we'll slap some basing on and have a look at these in the cold light of day once they're based. Back in a flash. And here we are with the models based. So I've used a bit of uh, Vallejo um, earth texture, uh, dark earth. Uh, dry brushed with a bit of um, Iraqi sand and a couple of tufts. I really like the finished effect. I think everybody looks suitably grimy um, for the period and the pre-shading has really led to um, a nice effect um, around the legs I think. Everything looks darker in the shadowy areas away from the source of light above. I think there are some colours that would be very difficult to, to pull off with this technique. You're not going to get any clean white um, that would require highlighting and if we use the guy on the end as sort of an example. Um, that skeleton horde used there, it's still quite dark on his uh, padded jacket and you would need to highlight that a couple of times I think to get a decent white. So perhaps the technique won't work that well for uh, Napoleonics for example but I think for um, the Dark Ages, the Middle Ages, World Wars um, or if you just want people to look really filthy then this is the technique to go with um, and I will be using it again on some different ranges I'm sure. If you've got any comments, please leave them below. Speak to you next time. Bye-bye.